Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. We have a new week in front of us. Covering all of that glorious Destiny 2 news has got me pretty thirsty for playing a lot of Destiny 1, and that's exactly what I've been doing this week. For us quote-unquote hardcore players, there's very little for us left to do, but I think that's what's so incredible about this game is that even though there's nothing for us to collect, we are still drawn to this game because at the end of the day, it's a fun game to play. Anyways, in this video, we're going to dive into the weekly activities and also take a look at some really interesting weapon picks from the tower vendors. Let's get started. Starting with the weekly featured Crucible playlist, we have the return of Mayhem Rumble. Funny enough, the one week I didn't cover the weekly activities, we had Rumble, so I'm sorry I couldn't tell you about it, but I did play it for four games or so just to finish that part of the record book. Finally, I can move on. The other playlists available this week are Clash, Rift, Elimination, Skirmish, and Rumble Supremacy. Next up, we have the weekly story playlist which this week is again the Iron Lords, giving you the story missions from the Rise of Iron expansion, and the modifiers are Voidburn and Small Arms. As we'll see in a moment, there's quite a few good options for the vendor weapons this week, so this is a great way to get some extra marks. Moving on to the good old SIVA Crisis Heroic playlist, and the modifiers are Solar Burn, Berserk, and Brawler. Those are some pretty fantastic modifiers if you need to grind out those strikes. For the Nightfall, we have the Dust Palace, and the modifiers are Berserk, Small Arms, Chaff, and Match Game. Despite the lack of burns, this is actually a pretty easy Nightfall this week, especially if you decide to take in one of those new exotic elemental primaries. Finally, we have the weekly featured raid, and of course this week is the return of Vaults of Glass, which of course means you have the Templar and Atheon challenges available to you. I'm not a very big fan of the Atheon Challenge, and I don't really have another reason to complete it, so I might just end up skipping it this week. Moving on to the vendor weapon picks for this week, we start with the Crucible Quartermaster, and of course we have another amazing palindrome. It's got some pretty great perks, including Rifled Barrel and Luck in the Chamber, and this would have been an absolute god roll if it had Range Finder instead of Luck in the Chamber, but you can't win them all. While the Palindrome is a pretty great weapon, I actually prefer my Ayas Luna, even though it doesn't have very good perks at all. In fact, it has pretty awful perks for PvP, but I just really like the way this weapon feels. I'm not the most uh, accurate shot, so I'm probably not going to be getting too many of those two-tap kills, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference for me. Another great perk at the Crucible Quartermaster is a pretty good Event Horizon. It doesn't have the best scopes, but it does have Army of One and Perfectionist. I'm not too keen on this perk because, like I said, I'm not that great of a shot, so I'll probably be using Army of One. But then we have a choice between Explosive Rounds and Casket Mag, and the final perk is Firefly. Again, nothing too incredible, but definitely an interesting role. Next up, if you're a fan of Scout Rifles, you're definitely going to like the Keystone available at Dead Orbit. You have a choice between High Caliber Rounds and Quick Draw, Small Bore, and Triple Tap, with the final perk being Zen Moment. Moving on to the Vanguard Quartermaster, we have a pretty good Parthian Shot. First up, you have a choice between Outlaw and Feeding Frenzy, Perfect Balance and Feathered Mag, and finally Headseeker. If you're looking for a good all-around Pulse Rifle, this will not disappoint. And then finally, with Future War Cult, we have a really interesting role on the Whale, starting off with a choice between Explosive Rounds and Quick Draw, Hammer Forged and Triple Tap, and finally Firefly. This might just become my PvE palindrome. So that brings us to the end of the weekly activities. What I'm going to be spending my time on over the coming weeks is going to be finally finishing up that record book and kind of tying up loose ends on my Destiny 1 characters. Like today, I realized I was missing some random dead ghosts, so I went ahead and got those done. Aside from that, I'm going to be looking for my final set of armor for all of my characters as we start to round out our Destiny journeys. But anyways, let me know what you're working on this week in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more Destiny content. And I will see you all next time. Now what Bungie has done for Destiny 2 is create a hybrid system, which is going to use partially dedicated servers and partially peer-to-peer. -peer. The way it's going to work is that Bungie is going to take responsibility for the hosting and the physics sides of things, and then your console is going to be responsible for processing your inputs. 